Becoming Vikings? Was that uh, inevitability in your lives? I think that was only George, right? Yeah, just me, actually. <laughs> and thankfully it's um, hopefully going to come to fruition. I was a Viking already. You're yeah, a, Viking. a real Viking. Did you have real Viking stuff? I mean, when you grow up in that atmosphere, do, is there... Is it like on Universal Studio tours for Vikings? You no, know, funnily enough, it's like um, there's more Viking stuff in Dublin where we shoot the show than in Stockholm, where the actual Vikings are from. Because mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can, if you go to like the tourist areas, you would find like classic helmets with horns on them. But but generally, there's they make a bigger thing out of their Viking heritage in in, in Ireland and in England than, than mm -hmm. we do. I think we kind of take it for granted. You just naturally are. We, we're just naturally Vikings. So are you are you big part hard ass that we don't get to see on the show quite as much or I mean, you're kind of the funny guy in the show you're kind yeah. of a wild man he's a killing machine <laughs> yeah yeah, he, yeah. yeah. do you all live together <laughs> are you all going for the six pack at the same time or are you uh, do you have to you don't have to worry about the six pack. Why not? Have you ever seen you naked on the show or topless on the show? Yeah. yeah. How could you have forgotten it? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, like less clothes you than anyone. I forgot my, my <laughs> 15 seconds of nude. No, I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm exposed. <laughs> Is that what you all signed up for? So you, you look beautifully, be beautifully yeah. exposed. What's the That's thing it. about the show, though? We don't actually have to do the kind of silly Spartacus routines and kind of mm. start lifting up tires and smashing things with sledgehammers and things to get in shape because. It's cold in Scandinavia. Yeah. And, uh, and they had two meals a day, the Vikings, and, and you know, they're, they're all farm, farm men, farm boys. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is just comes from grafting and rowing and things. It's not a kind of, it would be stupid if we went out and did a, a proper kind of workout all day and then kind of came back and looked, you know, too affected. Do you so do a lot of fight training? Loads of fight training, mm -hmm. so that keeps us healthy. And, and climbing up the mountains, up and, up and down the mountains each day keeps you fit as well. They don't have a golf cart that brings you back no, down? No, nothing like that. Bring you back down and take you out. <laughs> 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 well, you look cool when you're going up. You know, going back down, anybody can do, I guess. So, when did you did you get just do regular auditions to get involved in this? Was there? Uh... Um, I put myself on tape. I'm not sure. I saw a casting director in London, Frank Mozell. Um, went and saw him in a church. Actually, I have to tell you that. No, no. I, my audition was in a church underneath a hotel mm -hmm. in London. So weird. <laughs> was that what is your place? Was it? No, it was just he, he needed a space and he hired out that space and That's cool. it was kind of quite fitting. Do your audition for us. Right now? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Do it, go on. Not performing monkey. Come on. Monkey. Monk. Performing monk. Performing monk. <laughs> Are you, did you all audition for the roles that you end up getting? No, I auditioned, I auditioned for Rollo to start with, and then I went on this wild goose chase of auditioning for different characters, because I think originally they were looking for an older um, actor to play Rollo. Mm. Um, and he was written very differently. And then I, uh, I did uh, lots of self-tapes and auditions for different roles, and then eventually it came back full circle, and, and they, they had a second look at me for Rollo. So I kind of landed on my feet, because that was the role that I wanted from the beginning. I wanted those two roles. Yeah. Mm. He's really jealous. <laughs> First too late. It must be fun, fun to be Floki. It's fun to be Floki, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be quite quite as serious and you get to, you know, yeah. do a lot of big stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great character in that way because he's nuts and, you know, that gives you the freedom to really play with the character and have fun with it. It is fun. So did Michael tell you about the whole arc of the first season when you guys started, or did you kind of go script by script? Script by script. I felt like I was kept on a need-to-know basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Just yeah. Sides. yeah. <laughs> Michael has, I think, in his head, he's got it all mapped out, this this gigantic world, and we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg in, in series one. Mm -hmm. It's going, you know, he's got this, this, you know, the Vikings were everywhere, so we're, we're still in Kattegat, and we've just gone over west to England, and there's still loads and loads of territories, you know, that's yet to be discovered, so... I don't he's think gonna, Michael knows what's... No, he's he got a million ideas in his head, but he doesn't know exactly what's going to... He's going to go A to Z, and then he has to... Yeah, so you're going to be doing this when you're 50, 60 years old, or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael's just a wealth of knowledge, man. Mm. If I had a... I copied off dumb people in high school. If Michael had been sitting next to me, I would have got really good grades. <laughs> well, does he... I mean, did he, he's telling us how he's an academic, you know, by trade originally and then he kind of fell into screenwriting uh, now he's kind of become the showrunner of these shows with these kind of big visual you know intense shows does it feel like any different than another showrunner does it feel like there's more it does I think he's he, he get more than a showrunner with Michael because he's, he's almost a historian at heart as well so you know that there's masses of research that have gone into to his scripts as well as 
you know, ticking boxes and, and, and just you near know, dramatic value. Mm -hmm. And you kind of feel obliged to kind of to do as much mm -hmm. in, in return and kind of you know, live up to the research he's done. So he's quite inspiring to work with. Yeah, but it's not only Vikings he knows about, he knows anything. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Historical is unbelievable. Mm. And he like cross references what's happening in different parts of the world at the same time as the Vikings and. I yeah, think this year we're going to learn a lot about the English, right? Yeah. Who we invade. Think so, yeah. <coughs> so is that fun? Are you guys interested in learning all of that, or are you just kind of like it's a great gig? Let's go play. <laughs> Let's get some swords yeah, and fight fun. each other. I think it's I think it's really fun. Yeah. Especially getting to know like this being my my history. Uh, uh, getting to know the Vikings better, you know, because I have as m as many misconceptions about Vikings as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, diving into the culture and doing a proper research has been really exciting. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of culture long forgotten as well. I think that people have got this preconception of of what they think the Vikings are, and it's about time I think that we've been able to kind of put it onto onto screen and kind of give them justice as a culture. And, as a, you know, and, and the things that they've accomplished and they haven't really got the credit for it. Other people have taken a lot of the credit for it over the years and it's been a very one-sided story told from the Christian monk's point of view with the scriptures mm -hmm. and I, think, I feel quite privileged to kind of be involved in something where... <laughs> Are you feeling eaten up as, a, as the monk in the group? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know your arc as you went into this season? I mean, no, not it's really. Evolution it is, the isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I read maybe the first three or four episodes when we got to Ireland last year and yeah so I didn't have a clue and that's what's so fun about episodic television is that compared to a film but it is isn't it because yeah. you like you, you don't scary. know what's going to happen to yeah. your character and mm. you know every couple of weeks new scripts come in and yeah, it's kind of like, like Christmas. And so yeah. 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 And every, <laughs> whenever a new script comes, you kind of like, so the okay, and you're afraid you'll be disappointed and like, okay, what's going to happen? And no, there's a lot of surprises. It's a world as well. I mean, it's, 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 it's a world where it's kill or be killed sometimes, and you do you have no idea you know, whether your character's going to make it out alive at the end of the season yeah. or not, and it's one of those things where you, you want to go to the last page of every new script that Michael writes yeah. to check that you're still yeah. alive. One of us died one very of us, early. One of the producers called the Angel of Death. <laughs> he, he would walk up to you. I'm not mentioning any names. He would walk up to you and say, "Come, let's have a chat." <laughs> You're tired. You're tired. <laughs> you know, well, I heard Gabriel Bernstein for three seasons. It was. Yeah, no. <laughs> He's good. One of us die very early next year. What? <laughs> have you told them yet? <laughs> no, you haven't read the script yet, buddy. Uh, you haven't read episode three yet. What? You haven't read episode three. three. No. no. This is kind of what's going on though. Yeah. Like, who's got the information? Who's got the information? <laughs> well, it's like the gang's getting back together, I guess. How long has it been since you actually shot these episodes? November. Mid-November. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you're starting again next month or? Yeah, the, this month. A couple of weeks. Yeah. We're mm. going back on, on Saturday, like yeah. most of us, and then with the raincoats this year. So does, the, does yeah. this kind of group Unlocked relationship one. replace rehearsal on some level? I mean, do you guys, have you guys figured it out? I think we're really lucky, actually. I think actors are a funny breed, and sometimes, you know, some actors are out to look Sometimes after themselves, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and you do. You can't necessarily trust your fellow people you work with. I've, you know, I've definitely done jobs like that, but we've got a kind of quite a special dynamic, and I think I really trust We're these guys. We're all wankers. So we may <laughs> laugh and joke and, and go out and have a laugh, but um, at the end of the day, I feel comfortable kind of taking myself to a place with Rollo anyway, and and feeling like I've got support from these guys, and they're going to tell me if I'm making stupid decisions or if I should you know, stay on track. And you haven't read episode five. Man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so are you now the guy who gets all the scripts early? Is that are, have you gotten a, a uh, position? No, there's no privilege. <laughs> there's no privileges. I know who dies so. though. <laughs> he writes the scripts. Oh, no. That's right. I want to get rid of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So if you you're kind of kind of were a late comer to the production, which I read something about you kind of sweeping in at the last second. Yeah, I I, I um just on holiday in Ireland, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I was pretty late in the thing. I hadn't heard about it, but uh, yeah, I put myself on tape and I was over there within a week. I was very lucky. Is this the best role you've gotten? Real? I mean, obviously it's yeah, great, but it's like best group of people to work with and best creativity. Wise. Not stop. You know, Mark, no, I'm talking about the producer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, you've gotten a lot of, I mean, a lot of the stuff in your resume is more of the physical variety and less of the emotive variety. And this really is you carrying this thing, and you're, you know, there are a lot oh, of silent scenes of your face figuring things out in this movie. In this oh, show. no, there's so many actors, mate, in it. Everybody's carrying it. And, uh, no, it's just great to be working with Michael. It's just brilliant. 
You take the See village. how humble he is? Yeah. <laughs> Just here, or is No, he... he's actually like that. Uh, yeah, so that's why I'm sorry about that. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Is that a now. bunch of the Ivy calling? Or? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's the, uh, no, the but rape no, that's telling humble, you and, and that's why, you know, it feels good to to, to be a supporting actor. To support that guy mm-hmm. carrying this thing. We, you guys do seem pretty happy together. We are. We're well. happy to see each other. We haven't seen each other for a while. Yeah, we haven't seen, I haven't seen good mm-hmm. stuff yeah. since we finished mm-hmm. shooting. Yeah. So do you think he cast, that Michael cast for people who kind of fit that way outside of the actual No, I production? think that's a lucky coincidence. I don't think, like... Anybody would ever cast for like whoever is like seems like a nice guy, you know. I think you'd always <laughs> cast the ones who, who are the best for the jobs. And it then. seems like a jerk. Also, it seems like a dangerous game with you're together that long, you know. Yeah. yeah. It could have gone a certain way though. I mean, the, the, you write a show about Vikings who are, you know betrayed as this, these these barbarians in in some respects, and you could have easily gone for you know these alpha male got a, got, a, got a cast of you know big butch macho guys that are all mm-hmm. just very one dimensional. And our cast is really eclectic. It's really. So, you know, unreal. besides the one dimensional part, you guys are big butch. We are, guys, but, but the personality <laughs> is going on. Yeah. Especially the. Our, our yeah. I'm trying. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I did notice your facial scars healed very quickly between episodes uh, six and seven. Time passes, yeah. Because <laughs> you couldn't quite look like that for more than one or two episodes, and it was like get back to selling the show. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I was hoping I'd end up like uh, Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now and just be completely fucked up, but uh, we'll see where he goes. Is that kind of the dream, to be a character actor on a show like this, to get his role? It's just any character with uh, with fire in their belly, really, for me. Anyone that's kind of... I think it's always about what's the flip side of the coin. You know, anyone who is in history who's heroic and, and, and changes things for the better has often got another side to him. You know, no one, they have to sacrifice lots to get what they, they want to achieve and, and they have you know, their hopes and dreams, they have their fears and insecurities and what's so great about Michael's writing is it's all there. It's, there's so much depth and layers to every character and you feel like you're playing a real multifaceted character. Well, Rollo's kind of the Hamlet of the show. You know, he just can't decide well, which Danish. way to go, and he's, you never quite know what's actually going on there. Where you're kind of a man of action, yeah, you know, he's gonna move forward and stop. Yeah, it's a good conflict between everybody in Roller, actually, not just Ragnar, but uh, he's got his make his mind. There's up. a good conflict between Rollo. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well said. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna mm. get your shit together, mate. <laughs> yeah, flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah, like an emotional baby. <laughs> And is it as hard to do as it looks, or is it? Are you going back to your, you know, it's, it's, to the it's, Hilton and it's enjoying pre- it? It's pretty tough. Some it's weeks. It's tough. It's full yeah. on. I mean, we have certain days. We had a whole week of night shoots on yeah, the boat. Like in the thing is, it rains every day in Ireland. I was first time I was I was flying over there. I met this Irish guy on the plane, and he was like, "You know, it only rains twice a week in Ireland. The first three days and the last four. And then it, it was literally like That's that. That's funny. Like for the first three months, it, it was sunny three days or something. You know, somebody made a joke to me that uh, I said, "What's the weather been like?" And they go, "Changeable." And I thought that was funny. But then I seen it like a week later on the news it had on the bottom, weather is changeable. Yeah. 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 In certain places we film, they have like a microclimate where you're going up Mm. the mountain and it's blazing hot and then you suddenly get onto the heath, which is probably a a 10 minute walk and you're suddenly in the middle of a hailstorm Mm. and then you go back out of the hailstorm and it's sunny again. They've got these microclimates everywhere. It's weird. So, yeah, yeah, if you so start complaining about the weather and the tough... So you're wet a lot. It's a great backdrop Mm. though. It's a great what? Sorry? Backdrop. It's beautiful. Well, I mean, I'm, you guys play is. softball with the Game of Thrones people, or they're up in the guys there. Yeah, yeah. we should they're find a kind of neutral world. ground, a no man's land in the middle, and <laughs> yeah. a skirmish. No swords or hatchets. Battle stand in the front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd win. You'd and what about the win. ladies of Vikings? It seems like there are f- there are few of them, but they're pretty intense. Mm. Yes, they are. Is that part of the? F- None of them here today. I can say they're probably. Uh, no. Get themselves ready yeah. <laughs> to go back out with the boys. No, the girls do a great job on the show, man. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Tough women. I mean, they're yeah. playing some tough characters. Mm. Mm. Is that fun to play against? I mean, I, there are very few written like that ever. Rough sex, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Every Once again, Rollo's in love with my wife. <laughs> yeah. well, Rollo's confused character. Yeah, well, maybe uh, there's some uh, history there. George is a confidant. Yes, I've seen you in those later episodes sitting next Apple to Apple in love with Lagos. meant to be on my side. <laughs> trying to play Apple the game. He's lost know? his. He's playing, he's playing the long, he's the long game. Yeah, yeah, playing the long game. He sits well. next to Lagos all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah the best friend. You haven't read the next episodes? 
Do you feel like you own him now? Have you have you taken possession? Yeah, no, he's still mine. Yeah, he's little. <laughs> little dungeon Damn. elf. Told you we should have killed him. Yeah. <laughs> And did you expect the reaction to the show that it's gotten? It's a big, big hit. It's weird for me, and um, I don't know what it's like for you in, in, in Sweden, but for George and I, it's only just started um, airing in the UK. So we keep coming out here for press, and, and it's just mad that people are actually watching this show. It's, it's really weird for us because it doesn't. We've been so far away from it all, mm. um, and you know, you've, you've, we've heard about the, the reviews and the, and the press for back in the UK, but it's now the first time we're really actually kind of getting to meet the fans of the show. It's incredible. So where do they find you? Well, just yeah, just getting, getting, <laughs> Are they stopping getting off the, the street. Plane? So you're walking down the street and yeah, no, that it was mental, wasn't it? When we get, we we got off the plane um, yesterday, walked up through the arri uh, the arrivals lounge, at LAX, and came out and all these people ran up with cameras and photos and really? like Vikings yeah. yeah suit like I was at I was, I was, Clive, recognized George. Once as a I was at um I was at passport <laughs> I was at the passport it's the hat yeah and, <laughs> and, and, and not having the eye makeup yeah no but I I, I actually enjoy that I was at the passport booth and, and the woman the woman um from customs was, was just staring at me not saying anything and I was getting really worried I was going to get turned away from the country <laughs> and she was like you're the Viking guy and, I was, and she was like my husband loves the show I've never watched it it was just it's just bizarre to get your head around I didn't realize that guys are watching the show. And for you? Well, no, I've been in Australia, no, I don't get recognised. <laughs> I'm just like a bum. You're just hanging out on the beach in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Australia People give him spare change. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I did make a dollar the other day. <laughs> oh, I was sitting on a... Did you? I was sitting on a wheelchair. I was sitting there just waiting for somebody in the bank. I'm sitting there being nice. Well, not being nice, just sitting there. But um, a lady walked past and she came back and gave me a dollar. No way. <laughs> For real? Yeah. Yeah. Shit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it in that little hilarious. casing. Yeah. I took it. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell well. my manager and that I'll end up with twenty-five cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe first honest dollar. So do you want to have T-shirts with your face on them? I mean, is that? Uh, no, not at all, mate. No. Why did you become an actor? Apart from putting my face on a t-shirt? Yeah, yeah. I know, make some money, mate. I'm too dumb to make any money in any other way. Were you just hanging out and just somebody said, come on, make a movie, or what? <laughs> How did you get no, started? No, it's a long story. I met my manager like three times in random places, random. Mm -hmm. When I was traveling and um, came over and just got into acting class and really had nothing better going for me, mate. And you did, you took acting class in Australia? No, yeah, here. I came over here. I came over here to travel. Mm. Just ended up getting stuck in. LA and uh, couldn't get out. Couldn't get out. <laughs> Some beautiful women around here. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, I heard about uh, then I heard about Padims and free lunches and stuff, and it's still my favourite thing on set. <laughs> and you, monk. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and were you a serious actor who? Came into all this, or did you go into another route? Or yeah, I, I went to drama school, but I got I got into acting. I, mean, I did a lot of uh, sword and stunt work when I was younger. When I it was my first job. I wasn't um, even considering acting as a career then. But I went to, you know, it's a long story. I went to drama school because of a girl. Um, and mm. uh, I got, yeah. Oh. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I just, I think I needed to be pointed in the right direction. I had a, a drama teacher that kind of told me if I actually, you know, took it seriously and applied myself, I could be quite good at it. And that's all I kind of need. And I kind of ran with it and not look back. And somehow, in Vikings, all that kind of stunt stuff I did when I was 14 years old was kind of full circle. It's kind of really handy. And you get branded with acting at birth? Did you? Were you? Yeah. Required? <laughs> and when you were three years old to start yeah. performing? Yeah. No, I, I started as a kid when I was six or something. I'm coming from a family of, or a father at that point. Yeah. At that time, uh, being an actor, and uh, so I got the chance to try it when I was really young, and and I just really liked it, and I decided pretty much then and there that. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. So is it fun having that many members of your family in the profession? Yeah, yeah. it's fun. You all share well, it's, it's like insights? It's, it's, it's dramatic it's Christmases. It's all I know, you know. It's, you know. it's all I know. Well, they really are like the Barrymores. I mean, it's like... Uh, imagine becoming, Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Imagine the fights. <laughs> you had me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of gets dramatic sometimes. Yeah. How's your baby brother? Huh? How's your baby baby brother? The baby baby brother? Yeah, Cole. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Him and Austin, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we're eight now. Eight strong. Jesus. Yeah. 
So do you want this to go on forever, Vikings, or are you, you know, figure three or four seasons, well, then you'll be in the... There's a lot of history, a lot of us die, my sons go on to do great stuff, better stuff than what Ragnar does. And there's yeah. loads of characters in the, in, the, in the sagas that we haven't even and introduced yet. And the, countries. The, mm. They invade a lot of places. You know, we've only got two you know. so far. Mm. So it could be like the Bourne series, where you just go from country each year is another country. And <laughs> the fast five, mate. Fast six. <laughs> fast seven. How many have they done now? Six. 38, yeah. I think they're up to now. Yeah. Well, the last one was not so. Die Hard. Die Hard 22. <laughs> Die Hard 22. Die Hard 22. They go back and forth between numbering them and naming them because they don't they oh, yeah, confuse yeah, yeah, yeah. us as to whether it's actually started fresh or not. So, <laughs> what's I, the easy, well, I think sorry. the difference is that a lot of fantasy shows out there are just from one, one author's imagination and you're pretty much stuck with that when you're kind of adapting, adapting a TV show from a novel, for instance, mm. whereas there's just such a massive grand um, scale of, of history and stories and sagas that this show has got so much scope to go on and on and on and it, it probably without any of us even involved in it. <laughs> yeah, because there are so many amazing characters. Yeah. So, and there are going to be some um, time jumps mm. coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you feel an obligation to be the, uh, the the eyes of the British public or the American public or the non-Viking public on the show, or is that kind of <coughs> have you evolved past that as a character? No, I think very much Athelstan is still exactly that. Um, Michael really wanted him to be, like you said, the eyes of a Western audience and how an audience can relate to this amazing group of weirdos. Um, but uh, yeah, so and and speaking a bit to Michael about what he's got planned for season two, very much still, Athelstan will be a kind of um, sex slave. Yeah, that. <laughs> but mostly, um, <laughs> the eyes for the audience and get to you know learn even more about how things happen when they go wrong and you know. Beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. something <laughs> else. <laughs> and is Floki the way in for the Vikings? I mean, I kind of, I feel like Floki is kind of like the heart. Yeah. Of this of this group of Thank friends, of so these guys. Yeah, I think he's got a whole lot of heart. I guess he's he's a loyal, loyal friend, and and I I don't know. I think he he I think he takes the whole the religion very seriously, and uh, even though he is the obviously the the Joker and, mm. and everything, I think. That to him, like this, the gods and and the magic and everything, to him that's that's real, you know, that's very real. So I think, like, to me, subjectively, as 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 Floki, I don't consider him being crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. But to him, everything makes sense, you know. All this, this, you know, it's for a reason, somehow. So so. And um, we also have the character of the seer as well, who you know you've, we've, we've introduced him and you've learned a little bit about him. He's very mercurial, and it's another character that I think yeah. you'll learn a bit more about in series two, yeah. and his connection to the gods. And yeah, that's so, cool. I like that 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 perspective. You know. So does he play, play poker with you guys at night when he takes off his, his head gear? <laughs> the, poor, the poor guy can't yeah. see very much through the prosthetics of his face, so yeah, yeah we have to kind of we have guide him around the set and make sure he doesn't yeah. fall into yeah. cables and wires and cameras. Yeah. Bless him. John Cavanagh. Yeah, John Cavanagh, yeah. brilliant actor. Mm -hmm. Irish but he gets walked, yeah, walked on the set. Yeah. <laughs> poor bugger. That's a tough gear. There's a lot of takes, stuff. Yeah. 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 It, it takes two and a half time. hours or something yeah. for his face. So what's the best day on the set <laughs> for you guys? When when not, when so there. there was this one day. Did you, did you go swimming? We we did this fight on a beach, and then like at rap, we just oh, you went after threw yeah. clothes off and, and yeah, went well, swimming in the freezing uh, Irish sea. But it was mm. it was nice, sun setting and. There's some beautiful locations we work yeah. in. Just that show as yeah. well, where we never, you don't really, when you're on set, you don't really get much time off. There's some TV shows you can do where you're sitting in your trailer twiddling your thumbs, waiting for your little scene to come up, and, right. and then when that's done, you're you know, locked away in your little cubby hole until yeah. the next scene. And it doesn't work like that on Vikings. You know, you, you, it's full on. You, you get up in the morning, you go and you do your stuff, and when you're not filming, you're learning a sword fight for the next episode or a battle, or you've got horse riding to do. There's always something we've done. I was, so by the sitting, time I was sitting down a lot, though, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> Was the hardest day physical, or is it, you know, something more? Just the air, it's probably the rain in the ass. It's harder on the crew than it is on. Yeah, yeah, us. the crew, the crew are pushing yeah. up dollies. Mm. And 
So the crew is the, are the real Vikings. They have oh, better, yeah. they yeah, have better yeah. gear, though. I mean, they do. Yeah, they do. The yeah, Irish crew are like a family. They've been together for you know, all the all of the, the Tudors, mm. and they've mm. done some stuff in between. And and they just they know what they're doing. When you get out to the top mm. of a mountain or something, these guys have done it for so many years. They are like the Navy SEALs. The Vikings may be betrayed as the Navy SEALs of the, mm. of the sea, but the, you know, the crew are the real heroes of the yeah, show. Yeah, they're brilliant. This sounds like the happiest show ever. It is. Well, we have our ups and downs, and we have the ebbs and flows. But at the end of the day, I think we're, I'm, I'm really lucky to, yeah. to be working with these guys. It feels good to go back there. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. I'm really good about it because of you know, a great bunch of people and, and, and good material. It's fun. There's no egos in Ireland. Yeah, you leave that at the door. If you start complaining them? about the weather and everything, yeah. you sign on to do the wrong job. It's a whole different yeah, experience. Exactly. It's, great. it's adventurous, for sure. You know? mm. It's fun to... You know, Ride horses and swing axes, and and then you know, and not die at the end. Having some <laughs> some really nice scenes here and there as well. Yeah. I guess Michael was talking about Odin's uh, castle, where you get to fight all day, get your body chopped up, and then you still get to go and uh -huh. drink grog at night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. is kind of like that, isn't it? Yeah. Our, our Valhalla ex existence in in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not as much for you. <laughs> you get to watch no, them have no. fun. Is that the uh, no? You're like ah, it's his best friend. It is upset. It is upset. No spoilers. Any any romances? Unset romances, George? Did you notice anybody? <laughs> Didn't find yourself <laughs> evil involved evil, in one. <laughs> no. Don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Did you find love at all? Character. I um. That's all right. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you be happy, be proud about it. TMZ no, I am proud about it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You're proud about what? Who is she? Sometimes it's very oh, good. Man. Sometimes it's very good that nobody can understand what Travis is saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we won't talk about Not Georgie's love so. romance. No, it'll make her feel special. Ex express it to the world, baby. <laughs> No, okay, we'll let him go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's alright. It's okay. Yeah.